Hello everyone, and welcome back to The Forge, your place for gaming news, reviews, and let's plays. Don't forget to leave a like and a comment saying what content you'd like me to cover next. Today's Forge review is going to be over Monster Hunter Rise, the newest game in the long-running series, and it's a series I've not previously enjoyed until now. I always felt the Monster Hunter games were not for me. The combat felt too slow, along with the very steep learning curve made it very intimidating to get into. Well, I'm here to say no longer, as I've played through all of Rise and I had an amazing time. But I'll go over why in each section, because here at The Forge, I review games based on their fun factor, controls and gameplay, graphics, sound, and replayability and stability. Now let's get right into our first section with how much fun was it? I had an amazing time with this game, even though I didn't think I would. I have bought every previous Monster Hunter game from Monster Hunter Try up until now, just hoping I could finally get hooked on one. Well, Rise is finally what did it in, from the charming characters making meals for you, to the fast and engaging solo and multiplayer gameplay, to the sheer depth of customization, it all comes together to make a very enjoyable game that is well worth the price of admission. I'm giving Rise a 10 out of 10 here. It is masterful in its appeal to everyone, new and old Monster Hunters alike. So, the controls are very tight and responsive here, a must-have for the high-octane action fighting these massive behemoths. A new addition to the series is the wire bug, a kind of grappling hook that has a myriad of uses. You pull up the reticle with ZL and press ZR to fire yourself in a certain direction, and with the wire bug you're able to climb up cliffs, run across walls, and even jump on top of monsters' backs. However, it usually only has two charges. In my time with the game, you could increase it to three by finding extras in the zone you're hunting in, but there's no more than that. After a couple hours with it, you feel so mobile that the usual sluggishness of Monster Hunter doesn't even apply. It's a very welcome addition to the series, and I sincerely hope it stays for later games. Now on to the rest of the gameplay. You are a hunter from Kamara Village, a feudal Japanese-like locale where you do all of your preparing for your hunts. The main loop of Monster Hunter revolves around going on hunts to kill monsters, using those parts to craft better gear, and using that gear to get back out there hunting more monsters. The loops get really addicting, and when I was playing through, I kept on telling myself just one more hunt, just one more weapon to try out. There are over a dozen different types of weapons to use here, from assassin looking dual blades to the standard sword and shield to even exotic looking ones like the insect glaive, which lets you shoot out a kinsect that helps you by giving various buffs against monsters and being probably the most mobile weapon in the game. You really just have to try them all. I didn't find what I enjoyed until probably about 10 hours into the game. Now the story here is kind of bare bones. I didn't play any of the demos, and when the game started, I felt like they just threw you in there, no real reason why the rampage is coming, except it's inevitable. But that's not really why people play these games. So that's why for this section, I'm giving it a 9 out of 10. Amazing gameplay that really speeds up Monster Hunter's tried and true formula. Now, Monster Hunter Rise is probably one of the best looking games on the Switch. With its full 3D graphics rendered in the RE engine for the Switch, it simply looked beautiful in all of its different locations. The bright, vibrant hues of Kamara Village make the game just pop when you're playing it for the first time. All of the weapons and armor look amazing too. They each have a distinct visual style that meshes with each other really well. The only frame rate loss I experienced during my time in the game was a 4 player hunt in the flooded forest, but it was still playable, a little bit noticeable. The only other graphical hiccup I've seen was going from zone to zone. When you see some flying enemies, they're moving at like 10 frames a second. I usually just avoided them, but it's something you see regularly. Altogether, I'm giving Rise an 8 out of 10 here. It's a visually striking game with just a couple of hiccups that don't impact your gameplay performance whatsoever. 
Ooh, the sound in this game, I am most certainly in love. The old Japanese style music from Kamuro Village is just a lovely sound to behold, and I enjoyed coming back to town just to listen to it more. The overall sound direction in this game is very polished. Every sound effects has a place, and it just emphasizes the action. From the buzzing of the insect glaive flying back to you, to a mighty wyvern swooping down and slamming to the ground, it really immerses you into the game. My favorite song, however, is when you get your dongo before each hunt. It's adorable to listen to and just puts a smile on my face every time I listen to it. Overall, for this section, I'm giving Rise a 10 out of 10 here. The sound just feels so in line with everything that I just can't give it a lower score. It really deserves it. Now, one of the main draws of the Monster Hunter series is how you can approach hunts with whatever weapon you prefer, making a longsword hunt much different from a dual-bladed one. Trying to get materials for each weapon and armor is almost a Herculean task, but it provides incentive by giving bonuses on the armor for more of the same set. This game is very much replayable, and I'll be giving it another go with completely new weapons, seeing how they work, seeing how they combo, and hunting down those same monsters. Stability was never a problem in my playthrough. Aside from the low FPS and a very heavily populated area in the flooded forest, I never even dropped in frames anywhere else. The game also never crashed for me, so it feels good to see a lot of the developers this year have really paid attention to stability. Overall, for this section, I'm giving Monster Hunter Rise a 10 out of 10. It is a masterpiece that can be replayed for months and even years after its release, and very much deserves its score here. So overall, I've been really impressed with Monster Hunter Rise, but before we get into the final score for you all, I'm going to give you 5 tips I wish I knew before I started my playthrough. Number 1 is going to be make use of the training area. They put it there for a reason and it helped me immensely with actually timing my combos and seeing how the weapon works before I go out into a hunt. Number 2. Only buy your items on the half off days. They come often enough that I never ran out of the things I needed like potions, traps, and the like just from buying everything on those days and crafting the rest. For any absolute beginners to the game and to the series, I recommend the dual blades and the light bow gun as your starting weapons if you feel overwhelmed by the choices. They feel like a good introductory tool to the monster's mechanics and graduate well to the other weapon types and it's what I started myself using. Number 4 is going to be actually guard during the rampage quest. I won't give any spoilers, but these monsters knock you off the pedestal so easily if you don't guard, it'll save you some frustration, I promise. And my last tip here is to use the hunter's notes. It's in the third page of the pause menu when you press the plus button. It shows what a monster's weaknesses is, what they drop, and even the most effective place to hit them. I wish I would have actually used these during my playthrough. It would have made my life so much simpler going back and fighting the same monsters over and over, actually seeing what hurts them and where it hurts them. Well there we have it, a full review of Monster Hunter Rise for the Switch and even some tips to help get you started. My overall score for this game is a 9 out of 10, with a finely forged seal of approval. It is an amazing game that brought a longtime looker into this series into a sincere fan. With the more agile combat to the sound design that I just fell in love with, this is probably going to be in the running for one of my favorite games this year. Thank you everyone for watching, don't forget to subscribe to see more content like this weekly. Come join the Forge on Discord and I'll see you again next time.